Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. I'm Dr. Dawson, and today we are talking about a disease in dogs. So I first wanted to just say thank you for all of your support and everything. I've been gone for a little while here, and I'll link down below a quick short video about what I've been kind of working on. It's on my other channel that really is just a miscellaneous bunch of stuff. Um, but basically, I've been working on my car and trying to get it back into working order so that I have a vehicle to drive. Uh, and I have successfully got it running again, and it's um, a pretty, it's pretty cool. So enough of that. Let's get talking about today's subject. So your dog, we're going to just assume this is your dog, uh, has some chronic weight loss, vomiting, diarrhea, just isn't doing normal things, has some vomiting, um, and then suddenly one day goes into a circulatory collapse, basically shock. Um, now, why did this happen? What disease is this and how can we deal with this? So I'm gonna just give a spoiler alert for those of you who are just joining. Uh, it's Addison's disease. Now, Addison's disease is a pretty complicated disease process and we're not gonna go into super, super fine detail about why it happens and exactly the whole process. But we are gonna go over some things so that at least you guys have a basic understanding, just not enough to pass boards in vet med, which is okay because you don't need to. Addison's disease is what's called an endocrine disorder. Now endocrine is basically the body system relating to hormones. And there's lots and lots of different chemical hormones that are used as messengers between the different types of cells and basically telling the rest of the body what to do. Uh, so these types of hormones would include things you've heard of like insulin, um, cortisol, which is the stress hormone. Most of the steroids that are used are a mimicry of one of these uh, messaging hormones. Um, thyroid hormone, a lot of these different ones are different types of hormones that are going to give your body different messages. The specific type of disease is called Addison's disease. This is hypoadrenocorticism, which is a fancy word, but basically just means that the adrenal gland, which is a gland that's sitting here on the kidney, is not producing the hormones that it normally should. And we'll get into a detail about some of those here in a minute. So what is the cause of this disease, hypoadrenocorticism? Why does the body of these dogs just suddenly start not producing this hormone or these hormones? Well, we don't necessarily always know why. Um, a lot of times it's called idiopathic. We don't know. Uh, we do guess that a lot of these are resulting from an autoimmune condition. We don't know exactly what stimulates it, and we're still trying to do and perform studies on that, trying to figure out why some of these dogs will go into Addison's disease. Sometimes we can figure out why exactly these they're going into Addison's disease, and that can be because of destruction of this gland. Now, what causes this destruction? Well, it could be things like hemorrhaging, it could be cancer, it could be inflammation, chronic inflammation. There are lots of different things that could cause a dog to go into Addison's disease. So what about the symptoms that we'll see with Addison's disease? Well, there's quite a few different symptoms that we can see. And in vet med, we call it the great imitator. And it's not just being melodramatic. It can look like a lot of different things. This can look like pancreatitis. It could look like enteritis. It could look like um, renal disease. It could look like a whole host of things and it's just Addison's disease. But many of the symptoms that we see are related to vomiting, diarrhea, um, just general GI upset, weight loss. Sometimes we'll see kidney disease, and in severe cases, what we'll call an Addisonian crisis, we'll see circulatory collapse or basically shock, um, where their whole circulatory system quits working normally, their blood pressure will drop into the tank, um, and it can be extremely dangerous, and we do occasionally lose patients that go into one of these crises. But sometimes we'll even see dogs that just have a little diarrhea, and that's the only symptom. Some dogs will get just dehydrated. Some dogs will just not want to eat and have chronic weight loss. And sometimes we don't know that they have Addison's disease unless we just run blood work and happen to find it. Um, so it can look like quite a few different things. So now we know a little bit about what symptoms are there, what hormones are being affected, and what do those hormones do 
that can make it look like so many different things? Well, there's two main hormones that are affected. Glucocorticoids, which those are the stress hormones, and typically the one we think of the most is cortisol. Um, this would also be similar to prednisone, if anybody's ever taken an oral steroid themselves. Prednisone acts like cortisol, and it does basically the same thing. This hormone is a response to stress, but it can also be related to a lot of other functions, including glucose. Um, it can be affecting, it can affect the GI tract. So think about if you've ever been super, super stressed, you might get a little GI upset, not want to eat. Well, the, this hormone does have an effect on the GI tract, similar to that, uh, but it can also do lots and lots. And when I say lots, I mean a lot of other things. Now, the other hormone is called mineralocorticoid or um, aldosterone. Now, aldosterone is a hormone that primarily we see affecting the kidneys. Uh, it does some other stuff too, but the main one that we see and appreciate is that it affects the reuptake of sodium in the kidneys. Basically, it's a hormone that's going to help pull sodium out of urine and bring it back into the body, and that will help to conserve water. And keep this hormone in mind, the word mineralocorticoid, and its job in mind, because we're gonna talk about it here in a minute when we get to treatment options. So these symptoms are very vague, they're not very specific, and it can be super hard to diagnose. So what do we look for to help diagnose Addison's disease? Well, typically we're going to look at blood work. Sometimes I've heard people say that they don't wanna run blood work because it's expensive, and it is not necessarily cheap, I do grant you that, but it can give us a lot of information. Now. A dog that's having vomiting diarrhea, not doing well chronically, and this has been a long time problem, running blood work is going to be very important because it will tell us, could this be Addison's disease or not? Um, and basically what we do is we look at the levels of sodium and the levels of potassium in the blood and they make a ratio. And that ratio is going to tell us, yes, this could be Addison's disease or no, this probably isn't Addison's disease, look somewhere else. And at the same time, running a blood chemistry is going to tell us which systems are being affected. And this is going to help us with treatment options. And also it's going to rule out a lot of other things that could look like Addison's disease. So running blood work is the number one thing that your vet is going to want to do if they think your dog has Addison's. Now, if they run a basic blood panel and it comes back as possibly Addison's, they're probably going to want to run a couple other blood tests as well. And this isn't just because they're greedy. They wanna classify what type of Addison's they have and confirm that yes, for sure, before we start treatment, they do have Addison's disease. So your dog was diagnosed with Addison's disease. It was confirmed, now what? That is the question. What are we going to do now that we know your dog has Addison's disease? Well, that can depend. So depending on what type of Addison's disease they have, only the glucocorticoids may be affected, or the mineralocorticoids and glucocorticoids could be affected. So like I said, depending on the type of Addison's disease that we have is going to determine the treatment course. Now with either case, we're gonna want to supplement the hormone that's lacking. And the biggest reason for this is that we're going to normalize those levels. Now in a dog with Addison's disease, probably the number one thing we worry about is what's called an Addisonian crisis. Um, and this is basically where they go into circulatory collapse. Their blood pressure is going to tank. They're gonna be very, basically going into shock. Um, and so when I say talk about treatment, there's addressing this initial concern. Um, and this is how some of our Addison cases present for the first time. Basically, we want to replace the fluids that have been lost. We want to increase their blood pressure, get their circulatory system back to normal, and then go on to more chronic treatment. If they're atypical Addisonian, basically we just have to supplement them with some sort of steroid. Um, and this steroid is going to mimic cortisol. And so a lot of times we'll use prednisone or prednisolone, and that'll just be a long-term daily treatment and depending on the situation, we may up or increase or decrease the dose and monitor the levels frequently. Now for typical Addison, Addison's disease, the biggest thing we want to do is replace that mineralocorticoid. Um, and there's quite a few different ways to do that. There's an oral tablet as well as an injection. Um, and both of these methods are very good 
and can be used in different circumstances. So just if your vet's using one or the other, they probably have a reason for doing that. So basically treatment consists of replacing the hormones that have been lost in some method or form, uh, whether that be a tablet or an injection, um, and both have been used successfully. And the prognosis of a dog with Addison's disease as long as they can get through an initial Addisonian crisis, if they do, did in fact have one before they were diagnosed, is actually very good. So as long as they stay on their medications and they're monitored and make sure that we keep them in a specific range, they do extremely well. Uh, their prognosis is very good. There's always a small risk of them going into an Addisonian crisis if they have typical Addison's disease, um, but that's usually limited to not giving the medications when they're supposed to be given. Hopefully this video answered all of your questions, guys, about Addison's disease. The next video is gonna be talking about the other side of the same coin, which is called Cushing's disease. Again, I apologize that this video has been so long in coming out, and I'm hoping to do a little bit more rabbit content here, but I'm trying to come up with some good video topics. So if you guys have ideas, make sure you leave them down below. And if you want to see the video of the first time my car started after I rebuilt the engine, make sure you click the link down below. Have a fantastic rest of your day, guys. We'll see you in the next video.